Welcome to Christian Theological Seminary, Lessons and Carols 2018. Welcome to all of you who are here in the building and to all of you that may be uh, watching our live stream. This season of Advent is one of waiting and preparation. We invite you to worship with us in this Lessons and Carols service. Stand as you are able, and let us do the call to worship number 157. Make sure that whoever is next to you has a hymnal as well. I'll read the light, you read the dark, and we'll read the last one together. For all who give you a face, Lord Jesus, by spreading your love in the world, we praise you. For all who give you a mouth, Lord Jesus, by defending the weak and the oppressed, we praise you. For all who give you a heart, Lord Jesus, by preferring the poor to the rich, the weak to the strong, we praise you. For all who reveal you simply by what they are, Lord Jesus, because they reflect your beauty in their lives, we praise you. You who are the God of a thousand faces, yet whom nothing can reveal completely except the face of the child of Bethlehem, we pray to you. Continue in our lives the mystery of Christmas. Let your Son become flesh in us, so that we may be for all our brothers and sisters the revelation of your love. Let's sing together our opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, uh, verses 1 and 2.
other this morning, greeting each other with, Oh, come, let us adore him. Amen. Lesson one, from Genesis 22, 15 to 18, God's promise to Abraham. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Let us respond together. Please join me in singing number 135 in the chalice hymnal, Blessed Be the God of Israel. We'll sing verses 1 and 2, and if you could please share with the neighbor, that would be greatly appreciated. The second lesson from Psalm 89, the Lord's line established forever. 
I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my steadfast love for him, and my covenant will, with him will stand firm. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as long as the heavens endure. His line shall continue forever, and his throne endure before me like the sun. It shall be established forever like the moon, an enduring witness in the skies. The word of the Lord. This is good news. Thanks be to God. This is a point in my tradition that we would say, let the church say, amen. amen. <laughs> Lesson three, Isaiah nine, verses one through three, six through seven, the reign of the coming king. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish in the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness 
have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let us respond together. This is good news. Thanks be to God. So we're going to sing just the first verse, and I know for some of you it's going to be hard, but we're going to cut it off. And then after, after lesson six, we're going to bring it back. Everybody got that? Lesson 4, from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your rel relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God.
friends. Lesson 5, Zephaniah 3 verses 14 and then 17 through 18. Rejoice, sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. As on a day of festival, I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach from it. And we all responded, this is good news. Thanks be to God. If you will, if you're able, would you please stand? I told you we were coming back to the chorus, so we've got to sing it with some gumption. Sing that 
one more time. Rejoice. Rejoice. Lesson six is from Luke two, verses one and three through seven. The birth of Jesus. In those days, the decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to the, her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. this outpouring of love and joy from all of you. Uh, I'm grateful. I hope that the Spirit of God that is in here today might invade your soul. Lesson 7. John 1, 1 through 5. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him 
was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is good news. Lesson 8 from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, the grace of God. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. This is good news. How many of you know that Jesus is the reason for the season? So I, I do want to warn you, this song is alive. It's a little movement, hand clapping. I know you've been kind of solemn, you know, quiet. So just we want to shake your system that this song is going to be a little bit of energy. All right. Can, can we can y'all clap with us when we clap? Can y'all do that? Amen. Yes. Everybody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. For 
of God's Son. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels wings and his servants flames of fire. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. 
and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. The word of the Lord. of the Christian Theological Seminary Board of Trustees, on behalf of our president, William B. Kincaid, all of the faculty, staff, students, friends, we do wish each of you a most blessed Christmas, a joyous new year, trusting that every step along the way we are reminded that yet Emmanuel is with us. So go forward in that power, go forward in that peace, go forward in that promise that God loves you more than you could ever know. Be assured, rest assured, amen. amen.